is rewarded. You're the last senator to ask. I um, you know, first I want to thank you for having this hearing. I think it's a very important and very sensitive issue. And I also respect the way that the majority of the members have asked, uh, I think, important questions, respectful on both sides of the aisle. You know, on the one hand, we have the fact that even in 2021, our LGBTQ friends, family, neighbors still face discrimination uh, from employment to health care to housing to homelessness among LGBTQ youth. There's a very real problem with discrimination. I think it's wrong in any aspect. But on the other hand, we have millions of Americans who are people of faith, who have serious and legitimate issues of conscience. These Americans practice their faith daily. They love their God, their church, and their community. And they strive to live biblical values. People of faith contribute so much, and we've seen so many stories even during the pandemic about a, the very important role that they played. You know, our Constitution Bill of Rights does protect liberties, and if anything, freedom of religion and free exercise of our faith is the most important and most sacred constitutional right. It's literally the reason why our nation was founded. The challenge for us as legislators is to figure out how we reconcile the desperate and, in some cases, competing interest. Unfortunately, I believe the, the Equality Act falls short of the goal. We've heard for uh, many of the reasons today. It would deny the religious liberty and freedom of millions of Americans by forcing churches, religious schools, and adoption agencies to violate their sincerely and deeply held religious beliefs. That's something I can't support, and it's something I'd never support. But I am open to finding a compromise on this issue. I want to find a compromise, one that prevents discrimination against anybody in the LGBTQ community, any American, but I also want to protect Americans of faith. So Chairman Durbin, and, and, I, uh, and I will ask Senator Grassley the same thing, I hope that we can work together and make progress because there's a real challenge here. Um, but I feel like even in this hearing, although the questions were insightful, sometimes we were talking past one another. I think that Ms. Hassan's pointed out, she may have used the word disingenuous, I think that was a, an appropriate word. When you see RIFRA being set aside in the Equality Act, that's, it's a fact. I'm not an attorney, but I am literate. And if you read the plain text of the bill, you know that's what it has, uh, has the consequence. But Ms. Schreier, first I wanna compliment you for being the only person who's had to be seated for the entire three hours and 15 minutes. That shows a lot of endurance on your part. And you've given a lot of insightful answers. You know, I, I coached youth sports for nearly 10 years when my daughter and my son were growing up, t-ball, soccer, baseball, softball. Um, and, I, and I coached these children from the time that they were about four years old until the time they were about 14 years old. Some of these kids had played on the, on the teams when you had boys and girls on the same team. They were competitive when they were up to maybe 8, 10, 11, 12 years old. But boy, a, 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 a winner goes by and those boys get on the field, and thank goodness that we had the alternative for female and male uh, softball and, and Little League Baseball in my case. You made a comment uh, that I wanted to go back to. Two things in, in my time. I know that the time has been long. Number one, I'd like to get an idea of what that nuanced solution looks like, and I think you were probably alluding to the vast change that occurs uh, after puberty. Um, but I also want to go back and have you restate something that I think is a real, people will exploit the, the plain letter of this bill. You made a, a comment about prisoners who chose to identify, male prisoners who chose to identify as female prisoners. Um, I'd like for you to go back and recount that because that's a real risk that prisoners will exploit, but I think people in general society will. So if you can, and, uh, and I want to ask another question. Talk a little bit about what that nuanced solution would look like, what we should bring before this committee and try and, and, and find and make progress. Uh, but then also talk about that real risk, should people choose to exploit it if this bill became law. Right. So the threat is not about transgender Americans at all 
who are not a violent population. But the problem with this bill is that it doesn't require anything for someone um, who claims to have a female identity. All they need to do is announce they are female. And of course, there are a lot of bio biological men who are a real threat to women's safety. So That's a serial rapist uh, who's in prison could choose to identify as a female and then would be entitled under this law to be transferred to a female population prison? Absolutely. Could they be treated any differently based on the elements of their crime? Or would they be in the general population if they're found in the general population in the men's prison? Well, in, in theory they could. Certainly under the Equality Act, it makes no distinction. Anyone who says they are a female would be auto automatically think, entitled to transfer. I think there's a long list of abuses that we need to work out to get a reasonable outcome. But tell me just in a, in a few seconds uh, what that nuanced solution may be, particularly in the area of uh, youth sports or uh, women's sports, men's sports. Sure. One, sp one solution was to keep girls' sports for biological girls and then create an open category for anyone who chooses. Um, or it's to force the boys' teams to get more accommodating and welcoming to those with male bodies who, who identify as transgender. There are a number of options. The problem with the Equality Act is it wouldn't allow any of them. Yeah. And Mr. Chairman, I'm afraid if we don't get this right, we could on the one hand, make progress, but create polarization that would prevent future progress on this issue, which is something I'm committed to working on. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for holding this committee. Thank you very much, Senator Tillis.